On this week's Nuclear Watch, bird's eye view of a badly damaged facility. NHK took to the air last weekend, hours after the Japanese government scaled back the no-fly zone over Fukushima Daiichi. A year ago, explosions devastated a nuclear plant, turning it into a twisted mess of metal and debris. NHK World's Satoru Masuya was in the helicopter when the camera captured the images, and we're going to speak in Japanese with simultaneous interpretation. Tell us why the no-fly zone was modified. The Japanese government reduced the no-fly zone around the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant from a radius of 20 kilometers to 3 because it was determined that the radiation dosage in the atmosphere did not pose a problem for safe flying. NHK's helicopter captured images from the skies near the plant for the first time since the accident last March. Now on the screen, we see the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant reactors 1, 2, 3, and 4. The number 3 reactor had a hydrogen explosion and is the most severely damaged. From the mountainside, it is possible to see the ocean through the crumbling wall. The number four reactor also had a hydrogen explosion. The yellow round object visible in the building is the lid of the outer containment vessel. The containment vessel is designed to prevent radioactive substances from the reactor leaking out but is now exposed to the outside air. The yellow green device is the crane above the spent fuel rod pool used to move fuel. At the time of the accident, the number four unit was going through a routine inspection and had no fuel in the reactor. The pool below the crane still contains many fuel rods. Now at the west side of the plant property, there are about 1,000 tanks. The tanks contain roughly 120 thousand tons of contaminated water that has been treated. When molten fuel caused by the meltdown is cooled with water, contaminated water is generated. Treating this contaminated water is one of the most difficult efforts in the accident cleanup. The space for tanks is limited. How to add more is another issue. How much radiation was in the air? When we were about four kilometers away from the plant, we were flying at an altitude of 700 to 800 meters. The radiation level was 0.15 microsieverts per hour at the highest. This was marginally higher than the normal average reading before the quake. It was lower than what we had expected. What did you think when you saw it from above? I had actually covered the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant prior to the accident. Back then, the reactor facilities were in an orderly layout and there were even trees on the property. Now, the buildings have been blown apart and the trees have been cut in order to make room for the tanks. I was speechless at the staggering change. We also flew within the 20-kilometer radius of the power plant. The area in a 20-kilometer radius from the plant is off-limits. There are no people in the homes, there are no cars on the road. This is a supermarket parking lot and you can see that it's empty. To the north of the power plant is Namiya town. Around the port, the devastation from the tsunami remains untouched. Fishing boats grounded on the land have been left abandoned. The baseball field is about three kilometers from the power plant. It's being used as a temporary storage ground for removed dirt. There's a plastic sheet on the ground so that the contamination will not spread. The dirt that has been removed is being piled on top of the sheet. 
I've seen the impact the nuclear accident had on wider areas. Did anything catch your eye? Seen from the skies, the homes and the shops are still there. However, there was a thin layer of snow on the ground, and despite that, there were neither footsteps nor tire marks of cars. Within a 20 kilometer radius from the plant, there are no residents or no people at work. It was truly a town without life, and this was stretching across a vast expanse. The gravity of the nuclear power plant accident and the painful struggles of the local Fukushima people struck home with even greater force. That was Satoru Masuyama for today's Nuclear Watch.